Wayne, Happy New Year to you. Um, how are you going, mate? Enjoying the new year? Uh, bits of it. I mean, the first part was pretty grim. I mean, we got to the weather was so bad, I actually went back to work. Um, yeah, but, you've uh, had a crap I summer, know. haven't you? Yeah, but it's nice and sunny, and so we're back on the boat here at Waiheke and enjoying it. Good on you. Which is nice. Mm. Um, one of the things that you ran on uh, and and um, campaigned on for the Auckland Mayoralty was basically putting some light onto this whole rapid transit light rail scheme that was being promoted by the government and in concert with the Auckland City Council. Do you, do you know enough well, uh, now? Yeah. Well, what I ran on was A, stopping wasting money yep. and B, finishing all the projects that we've got before we start any new ones. And so, and we've got a big one called the City Rail Link, which potentially is not a bad idea. It's been rather cack-handedly handled, but that's what happens if you ask some civil servants and willing to organise the contract. But it is actually not potentially quite a good thing once it's done and we've sorted out the actual costs, half of which come on the right page of Auckland. Well, I'm not entirely happy about the fact that we don't have a lot of control of the cost, but it's not a bad one. And so I think we should concentrate on that and see what impact it has. And then when you come to the light rail thing, um, the questions I have, uh, it, has a, it, it sort of started off as a way of fixing some bus problems in Simon Street and then they managed to readjust the bus timetables and that went away. Then it was going to be a trip to the airport and that didn't turn out to be a particularly good idea. Then it was going to be a way of intensifying development down Dominion Road. But a lot of things have happened. So I'm just suggesting at the moment that we have a breather and think about it because some of the things that haven't changed us are, number one, there is no growth in Auckland. The population is dropping. And that's not an opinion. That's just Fair. counting the number of people. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's not an opinion. It's just what it is. And, um, um, and so... What do you attribute that no to, growth. just quietly? And is it because people are heading to the provinces or... Yeah. Well, I think it's partially that. I mean, there's a lot of growth in places like Kiri Kiri and and Tauranga and and not and no growth in Auckland. Mm. And it, and and so, but I didn't cause that. Nor did I cause the 295 million dollar hole I got on arrival. But um, so that's a change. Then we had the fact that the COVID drove people out of the CBD, and so yeah. we've got 40 percent of our CBD offices are empty. Mm. And so that's that's where we should have more housing. Mm. Change the rules so it's a bit easier to do that. Mm. And the advantages of that are that the infrastructure is already there and not being used, and the people are already where they're going to work, so you don't have to have much more in the way of transport for them. And the CR, a city railing could work nicely for those people. And, um, and it'll liven up the city and fill the shops up and give it a bit of breather. So it's win, win, win. And so that's something that you have to think about what does that do to the light rail? And then the third thing that's affected light rail is that the government have passed a rule saying you can have three three-storey three, three story houses on every section. So we're going to get intensification all over the place, not necessarily down the Minion Road. So it puts into question, is it wise? And then the fourth thing is, uh, uh, one of the, my other th of my five things I stood on was to speed up Auckland transport and brain up the system a bit of AT so that the buses can go quicker and that we can have dynamic lanes on our feeders so that we'd have a, a bus lane on, on the inbound side in the morning with car parking on the outbound side and the reverse at the end of the day. That will also change behaviours. And, and so to rush into a $15 billion, which will soon become $28 billion um, project, when all those things have changed, is unwise. So I think they should just stop for a bit and let's see what happens. Will growth ever come back to Auckland? The only person I've always said it's a good idea is a celebrity chef, and I don't think we should be guided by them. Um, and so I'm not campaigning against it. I'm campaigning against doing anything about it for a while. Okay, no, that's, that's fair enough. Until you've got all the facts and, and you're right, the demographies work and out. And things have changed. Yeah, yeah. Things have yeah. changed since they started on this. They no. started on this. It sounded like a hell of a good idea years ago. Things change, and they have changed. No, I, under I understand that, but, but, and here's the but, if 
if the, there's a new government coming in, I see that the National Party have said that they'll scrap this project entirely. Um, Simeon Brown's quoted, as you're probably aware of, saying it's a gigantic waste of time and money, um, which would sort of take that decision away from you. Would you be happy with that either? Well, now, the other thing that's happened as well, and the most important thing that, that really made me the most voted for politician in New Zealand, is the fact that I complained about Wellington telling us, the government telling us in Auckland what we can do. There's enough clever people in Auckland to decide what we can do in our city. Wellington's job is just pay for it send back out a share of the tax. Now, one of the things I've discovered is that there is no overall fully inclusive transport plan for Auckland. We've got transport plans for buses, transport plans for cycles, transport plans for public. What about things? The things that get moved around the city. Freight is the biggest thing. And, if, and my big thing about greenhouse gases is to get freight off trucks and onto trains. Now, that's a really important. That's where the money should be spent at the moment, in my view. So, you know, so we, we are, the Minister of Transport and I have agreed we will produce between us a, a comprehensive transport plan for Auckland covering everything. Okay. And then we will see what does that require. And so... Um, but how much has been spent on this light rail project already, Wayne? Well, quite a lot of money, but um, it's still cheaper to stop than charge ahead. Oh, no, no, I accept that, uh, but and, what I'm saying and, and is... What, is and what they've done is we can learn what they've done, just stop there, park it for a while, and then let's have a big transport plan and we can go back and see, well, was there any, any value in what they've done? And there might be if we ever did become a bigger city, but I don't think we will. And um, there's no evidence to show people clamouring at the door. And New Zealand's not quite the, um, the desirable international place that it was. They're all going to Australia. And a lot of young people are going to Australia. And um, it's because they've got industries like mining, which for some reason we don't like in New Zealand. Um, <laughs> and so... <laughs> um, listen, the other thing that strikes me, though, is that when you say, give us back our money and we'll, we'll make the decision, you just pay for it. I'm assuming that I in Otago won't have to pay for it. You're just talking about that it should be... No, the share of money that they take off a third of the pe people who live in New Zealand are here. Right and centralised, we should decide what that third of that money goes for, not somebody in Wellington. So you don't want Waka Kotahi bodges um, all over New Zealand to decide it? You're saying that no, that is... No, I don't. I mean, yeah. the thing is that Auckland deserves to make its own decisions. The biggest consulting engineering firms, Becker and those ones, are all in Auckland, they're not in Wellington. Um, and... Um, and most of the voters are in Auckland. And most of the people who are making these decisions on behalf of the government are also in Auckland. So I think that we deserve to decide what we want to do. And um, the other thing is I'm an engineer who, who's actually not only built infrastructure, but actually owned it. And so, so I feel that I know a bit more than a celebrity chef's. So would you agree enough. then with the uh, source who's quoted in the New Zealand Herald today as saying it would be a cold day in hell before the mayor agreed for a cent of ratepayers' funding to go into the project, into the light rail project? Well, that source wasn't me. That was somebody who was interpreting what I might say because I don't... I don't so you're not, not impressed by the New Zealand Herald? They could have rung you up and asked themselves oh, one no. of the terms. Well, they probably rang up and found that I was away on a boat and then asked somebody else. Mm. But in terms of... It, I'm not, I don't think that that we should pay for something that we haven't actually decided we want. Right. You know, if we decide that that's what we want, and there are other things that I think I could spend the money on better, you know, I'd, I'd like to see uh, the freight, a lot more freight rail. Everything that comes in on, on a container should go straight into a train, not a trucks. Mm. Mm. And, um, and so, and uh. not only does that reduce congestion, the simplest way to reduce greenhouse gases is to put freight onto tr off trucks onto trains. Oh, you're talking to it's the converter on that, mate. Than, you're talking to the converter, yeah, the amount of yeah, trucks. It's and, a lot easier. Yeah. Mm. It's a lot easier than trying to convince me that I've got to ride a bicycle mm. or buy a Tesla. Mm. You know? um, so, you've got a big year coming up. Uh, how's your council shaking down? Have you got good support around your table? You're happy and confident that everything's going to turn out okay? Uh... I hope so. Um, you, you, the oddity is that in the way that the council, later Auckland City, was set up, it was set up by Rodney Hyde, who should have stuck the border in dancing, frankly. Um, and 
<laughs> you've got one person who thinks of the whole area, which is the mayor. You know, I campaigned on five things only, none of which would cost any more money, I might add, across the entire region of Auckland. Everybody else, all my councillors, and they're, and they're just like the bell curve. Some good ones, some yep. good ones, and most of them reasonably good. And, um, but they've campaigned on making their suburb or their area better. And so it's co- completely different. And so now I've got to take big picture items of transport to those people and they'll be thinking, oh, what's it, what's that do for me in Albany or Memory or something like that? Yeah. Which is a bit tricky for them and tricky for me. So you'd be, a, you know, you can't be overconfident. You can't, but I have to remind people, I campaigned on five things only and got a lot of votes. Please respect that. Yeah. Because oh. those people who voted for me also voted for you in your suburb. Yeah. And yep. they will also be voting later in this year or something like that as well, probably. Um, well, you've been around politics better. long enough to know that um, changes of governments mean, obviously, changes of priority at local government too. If there was, and, and the, ironically, MMP came in, in part to try and make sure that there weren't significant swings, but it looks like we might be actually, <laughs> you know, seeing the exact opposite of that. There's big swings now occurring um, under MMP as well. Yeah. If there well, is think, a change of true. government... Adam, this, this election is an election between ACT and the Greens and, and two large, r- largely irrelevant parties in the middle. Uh, we're going to be watching and seeing what's going to happen to that. So your argument is that the influence of the Greens and ACT is, is going to be far more proportionate than, than what Labour and National can bring to the table? Well, it's not my argument. I read it in the paper the other day and I thought that's, <laughs> that's, got, some, that's, uh, that's got some relevance, you know... Uh, it was actually came from Simon Wilson, whose normal things are what a terrible person I am. But in fact, uh, he put that, out and I think he's possibly right. You know, it's the, the extremes. The National and Labor are not that different; mm. they just wear different ties. I think. Um, but at the, will you? It's it's a really because I'm on the regional council, as you're probably aware too. And the question that we're all, I mean, there's almost a sort of second-guessing game taking place at the moment is, well, yeah, we're going to go ahead with it this year, but in October there could be a change of government and the polls at the moment would suggest that that's the case. Do you have to put that into your factor when you're planning ahead? Well, yeah, you do in some cases. I mean, there are some things that are so wrong. Like, well, can transport needs a good shake-up and I'm underway with that. The port is the worst-performing port in Oceania. And despite the fact that the people here don't want to do anything about it, there is going to be change there. But things like three waters, I mean, the government have passed legislation to take it off. The, that is the government. They're entitled to do that if they want to. So what we're saying there is to those people, that don't do anything that can't be reversed in case there is a reversal. But it means that there's no sense in me clambering and spending a lot of time on water care. It may not be mine. Yeah. Um, but it may also come back to you as well. I mean, that's just the reality. It might do too. So why don't I control the things that I can yeah, control? Yeah, yeah, like fair enough. And transport. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I'm very pragmatic. No, you know, I see that. Um, listen, so, thank you so much for joining us this morning, Wayne. I enjoy your rest of your holiday. I really appreciate the time you've taken out of your holiday to talk to me this morning. So have a good one. And um, when are you going back to work full time? Well, um, you, you are the mayor full time yeah, I guess you don't so. actually have to be in offices full time no so you don't I'm even, even today on the boat you know I'm, I'm, we've got wifi on the boat and there's people contracting me and bits and pieces so I'm not an office bound type of person I don't sort of see that thing of having to be in there all the time no fair I'm enough neither do I be exercising my views so yeah but yeah. Well, I won't be back in the office until next week alright but okay. does it make me better or worse? I don't know. No, that's a good good, good question. Well, oh, by yeah, the way, you know, how I'm are you finding your staff? Because it's always, there is a suggestion and the difference in. When you were mayor of Northland, which was the same time I was mayor of Whanganui, staff tended to do what governance said. I've probably noticed over the last 20 years that governance has had less power and staff have taken more. Has that been your experience as well? Pretty much. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm just reading a paper there that um, 
some Wall Street banker got rid of 3,000 staff yesterday and um, Amazon got rid of 14,000 and, and all the shares went up and I'm thinking, man, that'd be good. Because if you recall, when the Auckland Council was first put in place and Rodney Hyde was praising it, we had 8,000 staff and we were going to make savings and now we've got 12,000 staff. Mm. Um, and you think, hmm, Mm. That wasn't the plan, was it? Mm. But, mm. Um, uh, and then you get, you don't make the decisions on your own and a bo- as a board like a Wall Street guy does. You have to lead the people who have voted with you and by some of the people who might lose their jobs. And so it, you, it's very hard to do dramatic things quickly. Mm. I mean... You know that you're in local government, it moves at much the same speed as glacial warming. Really. Oh, I think it's got worse, if anything. I think it's almost in a period of stasis at the moment, but um, that's why people like you get elected so, by the electors to try and change that. Well, I fully intend to, mm. to the greatest extent that I possibly can. And um, that is, and, and people are already impatient. You know, people are saying, oh, it's been in there for, you know, 12 weeks and the buses aren't quicker. Hang on, <laughs> mate. I didn't realise there was a $295 million hole arriving the day I got in there either. Mm. And the people who have created that are quite a lot of the people who are there. Mm. And mm. they're conveniently ignoring that. Mm. They're saying, who would possibly have seen an increase in interest rates or an increase in cost of living? Well, I campaigned for six months pointing out exactly that. Mm. Because if you're in the real economy, you didn't need an economist to tell you that. You just actually look at your own business and you can see this is happening everywhere, mate. Wake up to yourselves. But there's not enough business people actually elected much. I don't think there's any... No, I think you're right on that one. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right on that one. Yeah. There's just people who've done well enough to afford to be the mayor. Mm. Uh, um, and, uh, that, and, that, that, it's a big change from a failed politician, which is what we've had before. No. And, uh, we, there's a... We do need more business people in councils. There's no question about that. Um, but we also need more business people sitting in senior executive slots as well, too, Wayne. Yeah, and, and less of these professional directors. I don't like them. You know, they go on 12 boards, making 50 grand off each one to give them 600 grand. Let's have someone who knows something about the business who's made 600 grand on that business. And then put them on and give them nothing. Milk it just for the joy of showing it up. And uh, I know that in the in Northland, where the wages for a council councillor aren't that big, you get nobody was a full time councillor. They finish the day and go back to their garage or their farm. That's or, right. Or yeah, they had a job, and they knew something about what was going on. They didn't have to have it explained that the, yeah that the um, interest rates are rising. They knew mm. that we've got full time councillors down here and uh, some of it, and. They all think it's a good idea, but I'm not too sure if I think it's just a great idea. Totally um, agree with you. Wayne, have a great um, year. I hope and I look forward to you going on and doing everything you want to do this year. Thank you very much for joining us this morning and um, best of luck to you and your lovely lady as well. Hey, good on you, mate. Cheers. Good on you. Look out yourself, Wayne. Time, mate. Um, that is uh, Wayne Brown, the Mayor of Auckland. Um, yes, that was an interesting interview for so many reasons. And boy, there'll be some mainstream media sitting there at the moment going, oh my God.